Hey guys, I'm Dan, one of the engineers at Mishimoto. Today I'm going to show you how to install our aluminum radiator for the 2013 Subaru BRZ and Scion FRS. Let's check it out. Tools needed to install the Mishimoto aluminum performance radiator in the 2013 Subaru BRZ and Scion FRS are quarter inch ratchet, extension, universal joint, 10 millimeter socket, 12 millimeter socket, 12 millimeter wrench, flathead screwdriver, assortment of Phillips screwdrivers, pop clip pliers, regular pliers, pick tool, coolant, and a coolant funnel. Installation time is about three hours and is a four out of five on the difficulty level. All right guys, first thing we want to do is we want to lift the car and place it securely on jack stands. Now to help you guys see a little bit better, we're using a lift. Once you do that, pop the hood. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the negative terminal on the battery for safety. Don't pay attention to these wires, we've got sensors hooked up. Next, remove the three 10 millimeter bolts and nine pop clips to remove the front splash shield. Next, we're gonna remove the metal skid pan from under the engine. To remove this, you're gonna remove four 10 millimeter bolts, eight 12 millimeter bolts and seven pop clips. Next, remove the 10 millimeter bolt and two pop clips from each side of the fender well splash pans that connect the pans to the bumper. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drain the coolant. Now, to do this, once you remove this yellow drain plug, coolant's gonna come out of this little spout and spill onto the frame right here. What we suggest is using a little piece of 3 8 ID hose. You can fit that right over the end of the spout, and this way you can drain your coolant without making a mess. To make the draining process go a little bit faster, remove the radiator cap. Next, on both sides of the car, remove three pop clips that go from the fender to the splash shield and one pop clip that goes behind the corner marker. Next, remove the two corner markers from the bumper. In order to remove these, pull on the back corners of them and then as you're pulling them out, twist them a little bit. Once you have them out, go ahead and unplug them. Once you have the connector out, slide that in. And then there's another pop clip hidden right here. Use a flathead screwdriver and you can pop it out. Next, we're gonna remove two pop clips and five 10 millimeter screws from the top of the bumper. Once you have all the hardware removed, remove the front bumper gasket. In order to reduce the possibilities of getting any scratches on your fenders and bumper, take some blue painter's tape and just line the top of the fender above the bumper. Next, remove the front bumper. Next, unplug the mass airflow sensor. Next, loosen the clamp that holds the induction hose to the throttle body. Next, remove the clamp that holds the PCV tube to the PCV hose. Next, remove the three 10 millimeter bolts that hold the intake box into the front of the car. There are two bolts up top and one below the box. Once you have that hardware removed, you can remove the intake assembly. Next, we're gonna remove the windshield washer fluid reservoir tube. In order to do this, you're gonna have to remove one pop clip. Once you have the clip removed, go ahead and remove the tube from the car. Next, remove two pop clips and four 12 millimeter bolts from the top of the radio support. Next, remove the two 12 millimeter bolts from the bottom of the radiator support.
Next, remove the two clips that are on the front of the radiator support that hold the hood release cable to the radiator support. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove the upper radiator support. Next, remove the four pop clips that hold the front air dam to the crash port. Next, remove the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the coolant reservoir to the fan shroud. Once you have the two 10 millimeter bolts removed from the coolant reservoir, remove the overflow hose that feeds the reservoir and then remove the tank. Next, remove the four 10 millimeter bolts from the fill neck housing bracket that hold the fill neck to the front of the car. Once you have all four bolts removed, remove the bracket from the car. Next, remove the clamp that holds the upper hose to the radiator. Next, remove the upper radiator hose from the engine. Take a little bit of paper towel and just stuff it underneath the hose outlet before you remove it because some coolant might be still sitting in the hose. Once you have the hose removed from the engine, remove the hose from the car. Next, unplug the two electrical connectors from the fan shroud. Once you have them disconnected, open up the two retaining clips that hold the harnesses to the shroud. Next, depress both tabs on the upper parts of the radiator that hold the fan shroud to the rad. Don't immediately pull the fan shroud out. There's a piece of foam that is on both the fan shroud and on the radiator. Take a small screwdriver and work your way underneath the radiator, between the radiator and the foam, to remove the foam. Once you finish that, you can remove the fan shroud from the car. Next, remove the lower radiator hose from the radiator. Before we do this, again, take some paper towel and stick it underneath the hose. This way you don't wind up getting coolant all over the front of the car. Next, remove the four 10 millimeter bolts that hold the AC condenser to the front of the radiator. Next, remove the four 10 millimeter bolts that hold the radiator stays to the front sides of the car. There are two on each side. Once you have the radiator pulled back a little bit, depress the sides of the clip that's for the harness for the horns. Now that you have the radiator stays, we're just about ready to remove the radiator from the car. First thing we're gonna do is this foam on the sides of the radiator. You're just gonna wanna pull the foam back into the compartment where the radiator is before you remove it, this way you don't rip it. Once you have that done, we can remove the radiator. Okay, now we're ready to install the Mishimoto radiator. Next, reinstall the radiator stays. Next, install the AC condenser to the radiator. Next, install the lower hose. To do this, first take the retaining clamp, slide it over the inlet, then work the hose on. Next, reinstall the fan shroud. Once you install the fan shroud, take this piece of foam, and it should still have some glue left on it to stick to the top of the radiator. Next, install the provided Mishimoto 10 millimeter bolts and washers that hold the fan shroud to the radiator. Next, plug in the fans. Once you have the fans plugged back in, put the wire harnesses in their retaining harness clips and close them up. Next, reinstall the upper hose. Next, reinstall the coolant overflow tank. This is two 10 millimeter bolts.
Next, reinstall the coolant overflow hose. Next, reinstall the filler neck bracket. Next, reinstall the air dam. Next, reinstall the upper radiator support. When you're installing the support, make sure that the two stays on the front of the air dam make it in front of the radiator support. Once you have the support in place, reconnect the two clips that hold the hood release cable in place. Next, reinstall the four 12 millimeter bolts that hold the top of the radiator support in place. Next, reinstall the two 12 millimeter bolts that go in the bottom of the radiator support that hold it to the frame. Next, reinstall the washer fluid reservoir tube. This is one pop clip. Next, reinstall the intake box assembly. Next, tighten the clamp that holds the induction hose to the throttle body. Next, reattach the PCV hose to the PCV plastic fitting. Reconnect the harness for the mass airflow sensor. Next, we're gonna reinstall the metal skid pan. First, install the seven pop clips that hold the pan in place. Next, install the four 10 millimeter bolts that go in the back of the pan. Next, install the eight 12 millimeter bolts. Next, reinstall the front splash shield. Install the three 10 millimeter bolts and four pop clips. When you're installing the bumper, be sure to fish the corner marker harnesses out through the ends of the bumper. Next, reinstall the upper bumper gasket. Okay, right now I'm just plugging in the factory fog lights. Next, install the remaining nine pop clips and two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the lower splash shields to the front of the bumper. Next, reinstall the two pop clips up into the corners of the bumper that go behind the corner markers. Next, reinstall the corner marker. Install the four remaining pop clips. Go inside the ends of the fender.
And now it's time to refill the cooling system. Remember to use a 50-50 mix of coolant and distilled water. Now, being that we're working with a Subaru BRZ, we're using Subaru-specific coolant. If you have a Scion FRS, get Scion coolant. For more cooling power, we recommend you add liquid chill to your cooling system. Okay, once you have the coolant filled up, reconnect the negative terminal on the battery. Once you have the cooling system filled, go ahead and turn the car on and turn the heat on high. That'll help get all the rest of the air bubbles out of the cooling system. Okay, that concludes the install. Take a car out for a ride and enjoy your new Mishimoto products.